42 teams from all over the world have started arriving in Darwin ahead of the World Solar Car Race next month. A Dutch team has won four out of the last five races. I caught up with members of the team as they worked on their car, the Nuna 6. This is uh, one of our uh, biggest projects at the university. It's also a very well-known project in the Netherlands, which we are actually uh, really, really proud of. And uh, all the team members in my team are uh, from the Technical University of Delft. Every year we think that we've built the best car possible, but each year we prove ourselves wrong and build an even better car. Your team has won four out of five races it's competed in. How hard will it be to hold that winning record? This year's regulations have been uh, very hard on us. Uh, we've previously used Kallium Arcanite, which are space-grade cells, on every car that we've built. This year, though, we'll uh, race with silicon cells for the first time. This means that the playing ground of all the teams gets much closer together. We've also changed the uh, aerodynamics of the car again this year and made, uh, made the car uh, more aerodynamic, about 10% better than, uh, than the previous car, the Nuna 5. In the first solar challenge back in 1987, the average speed of the winning car was 67 kilometres an hour. How far have we come since then? Well, a long way, basically. We aim at 95 kilometres an hour on, uh, on average, which would be uh, a good goal for us. What's going to be the toughest part of the race? The race itself is a very tough one. It's a very uh, hard terrain. It's uh, very, very warm for the driver inside the car. And we have to do all of this uh, as fast as possible and as safe as possible. Your team's car crashed back in 2009. That was a huge setback. What happened? Well, the team back in 2009 were just testing their car at high speeds, which would be around 110 kilometers per hour. And uh, at one of their final tests at 110 kilometers per hour, their rear tire bursted. So uh, at 110 kilometers per hour, their car was basically totaled uh, just three weeks before the start of the race. The race is a showcase of clean, green automotive technology, but how far are we from seeing solar-powered cars on, on the roads every day? Well, um, I think unfortunately that there's uh, still a long way to go. Uh, we often compare ourselves to the Formula One, uh, whereas Formula One cars aren't able to do grocery shopping. Uh, neither will our solar car be now, uh, next year or in, or in 10 years. Uh, but what you do see, like in Formula One, that technology is adopted from that into modern day cars. There's a lot of things that we use that we hope and uh, think that can be used in future cars. These are to control almost the whole car. And this is the gas pedal and the braking pedal. One of my tasks is being a, a driver of Nuna 6. The steering wheel? It's pretty much like, like a standard car. It's only got three wheels, but once you're inside, uh, apart from the fact that it's a little, uh, little cramped and get, gets very hot, it's just like driving a normal car. Do you have any safety concerns going into the race? Uh, no, because uh, we've got a, a team of structural experts as well who made sure that the car is safe. Uh, it's uh, being uh, treated just as a normal car by uh, the Australian uh, road authorities, so it's going to be checked uh, later this week uh, and uh, it will be safe for driving on the road. What are your feelings going into the race? It's, it's superb because uh, you work on it for a year uh, together with 12 other students. It's, it's your, your, your own baby, so to say. It's very cool to, to drive it. Uh, it feels very special and knowing that you're only one of four uh, to be able to drive it.